it's a very good day. I would like to welcome you to Northwest TV. And as usual, we are always very grateful uh, that in our studios uh, uh, grounds uh, this uh, day we have uh, a very good friend of our station. And this is no other than uh, Honorable Lucky Mulusa. Sir, you are most welcome and uh, Happy New Year. Thank you very much and Happy New Year to you as well and to the viewers. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Lucky Mulusa, you know that he was uh, our member of parliament for Solozi Central. And uh, currently he is a special assistant to the president, project implementation and monitoring. Uh, earlier on, I was just uh, joking with you. I said, I wonder how, how it feels to work with the president. That's one uh, area I would love to uh, work it because I know that the, the work is intense there. How are you coping with the job? Uh, well, very, very, very well. Um, I want to believe that uh, I went into this job uh, with uh, a lot of preparation. Yes, um, I was coming with a, you know, a broad spectrum understanding of how government works and how various uh, um, activities that the government undertakes uh, should be undertaken, particularly uh, projects, implementation, funding, and also monitoring. Uh, when it comes to working with the president, it's, uh, you, you constantly uh, want to pinch yourself and feel that this is real. <laughs> yeah, <because laughs> on a daily basis. Exactly, on, the, on, the, on, a, on a daily basis. You, you form the core team of the president and every decision that is being made, more often than not, uh, you are part of it. Yes, you, you, know, you contribute to the ideas and, uh, and you see the nation moving in a particular direction mm -hmm. based on the outcomes of deliberations you were a part of. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you look at Zambia having 15 million people and the, the president is probably surrounded by a core team of five people and you're one of them, so the six of you are basically uh, on a daily basis providing that uh, direction, holding the nation together, creating inspiration in the nation. Right. It's quite a honor. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you very Thank much. You, sir. Uh, so I would like to also look at um, a number of uh, projects. I, I know that you've been in office uh, together with the president for a year now, and um, a number of projects have been put on the table countrywide, we're talking of countrywide, and most of these projects are projects that uh, uh, are at the core of what people desire. We're talking of roads, we're talking of clinics, we're talking of so many other uh, uh, needs. From your own uh, judgment, in the past one year, what has been the performance of your government in terms of project implementation? Well, the performance has been very good under extremely difficult circumstances. You realize that uh, um, economic trends tend to have uh, downturns and uh, upward turns. During upward turns, uh, those are uh, years of abundance and you can do as much as uh, you can. Whereas during downturn uh, periods, it's a time of uh, constraints, particularly financial constraints. So you may have started projects um, during the years of uh, an upward swing. Yes. And then those same projects, the implementation, together with the, the demands that uh, come with project implementation, continue throughout the period. And when you hit the downturn, then you've got uh, financial constraints, meaning that uh, the amounts of money that uh, needs to be allocated uh, to the projects for smooth uh, continuation of the implementation of the projects become constrained. So against that background, uh, our response has been to slow down on some projects and also to, to start new critical projects. Uh, under normal circumstances, we are not supposed to, to start new projects uh, during that period. But then we realized that one of the reasons why our economy is so vulnerable is because the economy is not diversified enough. So even during the time of a downturn, we now start promoting projects that are going to promote economic diversification. Right. Yes. So I want to believe that on that score, we, we've done quite well. The unifying theme of President Longo's governance has been continuity with change, continuity with the robust um, implementation of infrastructure development, but with change in the sense that 
you now concentrate more on economic expedience in terms of project choice than political expedience. Yes. So I want to believe that uh, we, we, we've done our work and we are, we are doing it well. You mentioned one area which uh, I think uh, various governments have been talking about uh, uh, this uh, making the investigation. A, investigation of our, our, our economy. Mm -hmm. What area do you think we need to look at away from mining? Uh, which we see, which seems to be uh, our core economic uh, uh, activity. Yes. Activity, yes. There are three areas we need to look at. Number one, agriculture. Agriculture is very important in the sense that uh, uh, its inclusiveness um, uh, in the value chain of agriculture activities is quite broad, meaning that almost everybody would be included and would be touched, and everybody would be able to have some, some, some form of uh, sustainable livelihood. Mm -hmm. And agriculture is one area that is labor intensive. Mm -hmm. It actually creates uh, more jobs than any other sector. Mm -hmm. So agriculture is one area that we need to look at. But while looking at agriculture, we also need to be very, very careful. One of the reasons why our, our region in the northern parts of Zambia mm -hmm. um, is a high rainfall area is, is because of the undisturbed uh, forests, Restaurant. yes, they, they, they are disturbed the nature, um, our nature reserves. Now, if we promote crop production in areas like northwestern uh, province, Wapula, and northern and Muchinga provinces, then we will kill the rain belt. It will no longer be that uh, rainfall catchment area. And that's why you see that where agriculture is intensive, rainfall becomes a problem. So, in places like this one, we need to promote uh, uh, animal husbandry. You know, agriculture that has to do with the keeping of animals. Yes. And then the areas that have already been cleared, such as southern province, eastern province, and central provinces, including Lusaka, there we need to, to intensify an increase on the production per hectare. Okay. Yes, and not clearing more land. In fact, we need to create more forests there so that uh, those places can also be start so receiving um, uh, rains, yes. So um, uh, in terms of uh, diversification, agriculture, but with those sensitivities. And then the other sector that we need to look at is tourism. We've got a lot of animals, uh, wild animals in Zambia compared to many other countries uh, whose tourism is actually far much better than our own. So we need to, to promote tourism. We enjoy peace. We are a very peaceful country and therefore people can uh, visit us here. And also we've got very good weather patterns. Mm -hmm. For those whites who want to have a suntan, this is the place to come to. When you look across the Zambezi, you will see that Zimbabwe has done very well mm -hmm. in terms of promotion of tourism. And tourism um, is one of the biggest sectors in that economy, whereas in our case, it's quite a small, a small sector. Then the other area that we need to look at is manufacturing. When you look at the range of uh, uh, products that we use, from a needle right through to an aircraft, you know, you're talking of thousands of uh, uh, products, but we, you know, we manufacture less than one percent of those uh, uh, products, and yet uh, we consume quite a lot of them. So just looking at our domestic consumption capacity, we can actually sustain industries. Um, I'll give you simple examples of just nails. Nails, for heaven's sake, we are importing nails. Pots and nuts, we are importing pots and nuts. Where is the problem? Well, the problem is the uh, poor policy formulation. We don't craft those policies that would give us uh, productive outcomes and measurable outputs. So we need to revisit uh, uh, policies and when you when you 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 know you polish up your policy there's a response at the end of the day i'll give you a simple example like the time that we had the uh, forex challenges during the kaunda era yeah. he banned coca-cola mm -hmm. you know the coca-cola plants here um, you know from nowhere decided to come up with local products tarino. and we are tarino you know, what that meant was that we actually uh, did not have to spend uh, forex, forex where forex. previously we were spending forex. So it's, it's, it's simply policy. It starts with policy. But also, uh, alongside policy, 
you also need to work on the mindset of the people. Zambians have got an insatiable appetite for imported goods. They always think imported goods are of a higher quality than the locally produced good, but goods. But what they don't realize is that initially you have to start by promoting your own locally produced goods. And when manufacturers start having that capacity, they start to earning the income, they would actually improve on the competitiveness. But sir, do you think government is really, maybe you've talked about policy, but do you think government is really taking care of the manufacturer? Because I feel the manufacturer feels, the local manufacturer feels that he's more uh, taxed, he's more pressured compared to a foreign investor who comes into the country. Could there be something wrong there? Yes, of course. Um, uh, we, we are not doing as much as the, we should do to support um, the growth of our local industries. We're not doing as much as we should do. I'll give you a simple example. When you look at Kafue uh, Steel, mm -hmm. we've got uh, the, the Zambia's uh, consumption capacity of steel mm -hmm. is 250,000 metric tons per annum. Kafue Steel has got the capacity to produce 240 metric tons per annum. Meaning that ideally we should just be importing 10,000 metric tons per annum of that specialized steel, sorry, steel, which Kafue steel is unable to, to produce. But then in all our roadworks, the airports being constructed, we see steel being imported from outside the country. You understand? Depriving yes, depriving Kafue steel. And at the moment now, Kafue steel has been reduced to producing about 12,000 metric tons. The, the month, you understand, because they they don't have as much as demand, as much demand as they should. What now, can government do to well, we, an immediate um, yes, remedy? Yes, we 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 we, we, are, we, we, we are coming up with the means and ways to assist them. Yes. For instance, we are going to have a meeting with the the contractor at mm -hmm. the Kenneth Kaunda International Airport, yes. the Minister of Works and Supply, Minister of Commerce, and Minister of Finance. In, as well as state house yeah. to make sure that uh, we we seal these cracks mm -hmm. where um, the, you know there appears to, to, to you know we, we have situations where beneficiation that should flow into Zambia yes. is actually going outside the country mm -hmm. meaning that we are creating employment outside the country right. and importing an employment in our, in our own country so this is a, a, a situation of mindset change both on the side of us as government in terms of policy formulation, as well as the general public in terms of a change of mindset. You know, to, to, you know, to have that program of buy proudly Zambian. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the label and if it is made in Zambia, buy it. Yes. Knowing that if you do that, somebody else there will sustain their job. Somebody else there, uh, somebody out there will, will put food on the table. Great. Now, sir, I also wanted us to uh, to quickly look at something uh, locally, as you are in the northwestern province. Wh when you were MP for Sulawesi Central, mm -hmm. you, you walked along um, Sulawesi Chingola Road. It was a protest march. Oh, yes. Where you, you protested uh, on the state of Sulawesi Chingola Road. Yes. And uh, it, it, it caught everybody's attention, locally, internationally, everybody caught that attention. But uh, months have gone by, almost a year or two has gone by. The road is quite pathetic. As government, what are you doing? The president actually came to commission the road. Somebody somewhere is not doing his job. For me, I'm very, very happy yes. with the state of the road. Very, very happy. Mm -hmm. Because the, the alternative would have been a worse situation than we have now. The alternative would have been a worse situation than we have now. If nothing was touched. Yes, the alternative would have been this road not being constructed even beyond 2021. I'll tell you this and tell you now, that the Link 8000 mm -hmm. has got phases. We've got phase one, we've got phase two, and we've got phase three. Now, Solwezi Chingola Road was not even in phase one. Yes. It was not even in phase one. Now, the entire, uh, uh, out of the entire, uh, 8,000 kilometers that should have been constructed. We've only done about 500 kilometers of completed roadways, 
meaning that the Solosi Chongola Road should have waited for about 8,000 kilometers to be done throughout the country before we moved to, to, to phase two, yes, where Solosi Chongola Road was. And for a road to commence construction, it takes at least 18 months to 36 months of preparation work. There's the planning, there's the detailed studies, the designs. Mm -hmm. Then there's the uh, advertising of that road. Then there's the submission of tenders. Then there's the evaluation of those tenders. Then there's the picking of, uh, of shortlisting. Then the short, the shortlisting. Then calling for, for, for detailed proposals. Mm -hmm. Then eventually um, awarding. Mm -hmm. And after awarding, you give about two months of uh, uh, mobilization when you found the money. Two months of mobilization. Then the contractor gets on site. That process can take 18 months to 36 months. We put this road on the program to be constructed in three weeks. Instead of three years, we cut it down to three weeks. People are supposed to be happy. Number two, road construction has got stages. You know, you have got, you, you, you have, there's the stage to rip off the previously existing uh, road. Okay. Then stabilization of the, of the subsurface. Then after stabilization, that's when you come to add the stone base. From the stone base, that's when you can put the, 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 the asphalt on top. And now you can see a, a black tarmac. Mm -hmm. And that period also takes time. Now, this road, the construction started uh, somewhere in about uh, uh, July, August. Yes, of last year. So you're talking of August, September, October, November. December they stopped because of the rains. So in four months' time, the progress you see on this road in four months is quite a lot. The progress is quite high. When they will start laying the asphalt on top, it will be one, one kilometer per day, meaning that the, 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 the lot, that's lot two, where Butecon, uh, you know, is constructing and people are complaining, when it comes to laying the, the black surface, mm -hmm. it will be just over 40 days. And we are talking about by November this year, this road will be done. Completely. It, it will be done completely. Mm -hmm. Now, people are complaining, they are forgetting that Northwestern Province is a high rain, rainfall area. And uh, St. Dorothy itself, it's a rain belt area. Every day it is raining. Every day it is raining. And when you are constructing uh, the, the road and you are just at the stage of working on the, on the subsurface, you are likely to encounter a poor state of the road. Now, the contractor, for instance, is being blamed. It's highly unfair. Mm -hmm. It's highly unfair. Number one, the contractor never does any work unless told to do so by the consultant. So the consultant to tell you even where to put the diversion. Okay. The consultant tells you, you're going to put the diversion on the southern part of the road and not on the northern part of the road. And yet when you look at the northern part of the road, that's where uh, the ground is high. On the southern part of the road, the ground is, is lower, meaning that water would actually flow and go and settle there. Yes. Number two, it was made to, to construct the diversion in between houses. Meaning that if it tried to create any drainage, those houses were going to be washed away. And he was told to just put one layer of gravel on top. Okay. So the poor state of the, of the diversion was a consequence of instructions from the, con from the consultant. Who is the consultant and on this show? It's, a, it's, it's Rankin, Rankin engineers, Engineering. You understand? Now, um, uh, the, the, the consultant has issued fresh instructions to improve on the, on the diversions. He's been told to raise the diversion, and at the moment while they're raising the diversion, traffic has been allowed on the main road being constructed. So that, cha that challenge has been resolved. But when you look at uh, the complaints from the general public, it was like, you know, it sounds like it was even a mistake to start constructing this road. We are better off going through what we are going through than what would have otherwise gone through had we, had we not started uh, 
constructing this world. So you are very happy with what Buildcon is doing on the road? I'm very happy yes. with what everybody is doing on that road. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying where there are complaints, uh, let us know about it and we'll respond up appropriately. Great. But we shouldn't turn it uh, into, you know, despondence that should uh, incite people to rise and that kind of stuff. It's highly unnecessary, Great. you know. So we, uh, uh, from your words, uh, we expect to see Solozi Chingola Road by November yeah. yes. ready for use. Yeah, ready, okay. ready for use. In fact, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, sections will be released uh, from time to time as they get uh, completed. As yes, as they get completed. Thank you. We have Honorable Lucky Mulusa uh, live on uh, the North Northwest TV. We're just going for a short break and we'll be right back. special burning issue uh, program with uh, Honorable Lucky Mulusa, Special Assistant to the President on Project Implementation and Monitoring. So we've been uh, talking about Solozi Chingora Road and uh, I think most of what we have come to, to look at is that there's a lot of uh, scant information and small the people's understanding of the roads uh, involvement of construction of the roads. So now that we we are getting some of this information, and uh, we are being assured that by November, so it's going to be done. You talked of one of the divisions, some of the areas that the division is uh, single layer, which has been now uh, increased. What are the instructions on the actual tar, the, the, the bitumen uh, level? Is it also going to find itself in a single layer, and then later on? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, uh, like I said, um, uh, when you are doing the, the roadworks, there are a lot of uh, studies that are undertaken, and those studies culminate into the designs. So the studies indicate that uh, the majority of the uh, tonnage on this road is coming from heavy trucks. Yeah, meaning that. Uh, if we make the road um, in the ordinary way that we make uh, uh, the rest of the roads, the road would be getting damaged very easily. So the design of this road is actually meant to carry um, heavy tonnage and also it will be very wide. The road will be very wide and it's going to have about two meters of shoulder lanes. So you're going to have uh, the, the normal road uh, in the middle plus uh, two meters of shoulder lane on either side, right. yes. But over and above that, this road is actually going to be a tow road mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Uh, we're going to tow it. We're going to give out um, as a concession on a public-private partnership basis. So what we're doing is that uh, we're already evaluating um, uh, bidders to, to become um, a concessionaire on this road. And what will happen is that whoever will win the bid will have to duplicate the road. We'll have to build another road alongside this road. Mm. Yes, that's what will happen. So uh, durability is going to be uh, quite high because we're going to have one road only being used by half the volume of the vehicles that should have otherwise been loaded on one, on, on, on one road. So this is not a dual carriageway? It is going, at the moment it's not a dual carriageway. What the government is constructing is not a dual carriageway. Yes. But the private partner who will come to take up the concession of managing this road will have to build another road similar to this one. Yes. Yes. Okay. So meaning that this road will now end up being a dual a carriageway. Dual carriageway. Yes. yes. At the moment we are, we are at the stage of receiving detailed proposals for that. Yes. Uh, we also have um, uh, Zambia 
uh, road uh, which was supposed to be implemented in Solwezi and other parts of the province. But we have seen that these works have not uh, kicked off in terms of uh, the laying of the papers. We've seen the grading, we've seen some works being done, and again, um, like I said off camera, they, they have closed off these roads, mm -hmm. making Solwezi really a traffic jam throughout the day. Uh, what is government doing about this? Because we, we, we thought, I personally thought, uh, paving is an easy thing. Uh, you know, just pick pavers. Uh, we, we've seen government already bought the paving machines and everything is in place. Uh, why can't we just start laying these uh, pavers? Yes, you're quite right. We've been slow on the on the paved road. Um, I think it's about 2,000 kilometers. Yeah, paved. Uh, Pave 2,000 kilometers, that's what we should have done. We've been quite slow. And the only successful paving that has been done so far is about uh, a noticeable 800 meters in Chawama. Yes. There are pavings that are going up uh, elsewhere in other districts, but uh, we are not as fast as we should have been. Is there and any the complication in this uh, work? So? Not at all. Uh, there's absolutely no complication at all. It's just the uh, Procrastination on our part. We, we, you know, we, we create delays in doing things for no apparent reason at all. We just find we, we are delayed Nothing and we're not doing things. something. Yeah, you know. So that's one area that uh, uh, my office will move in to engage um, RDA. Great. We've got a lot of uh, youths who are unemployed, and we've got this program to create uh, cooperatives. So we, um, I think. We we'll try to channel that through the cooperative movement, so that youths and women can form cooperative movements and take up the the role of um, undertaking the Pave Zambia project. But I must I must admit it's quite slow, and uh, I think I wish to apologise to the general public that uh, uh, is inconvenienced as we delay in completion of project uh, implementation, particularly when we stop the projects at the stage when we have blocked people mm -hmm. from accessing a public Relative good. Yes. Yeah, when you block, when you withdraw a public good from the people, such as a road or a path, in order for you to improve upon it, it's, it, it, it's always important that uh, you do it as soon as possible and release that public good back to the people. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, sir. The president uh, made uh, a number of trips to Northwestern Province, as we said, last year. Uh, which shows uh, his desire and commitment to, ins to, to, to ensure that most of these projects are, uh, are implemented and done as fast as possible. Uh, we saw him travel to Angola with a uh, former uh, uh, provincial minister. Uh, what is on the ground concerning the Jimbe Road? Uh, anything has been taking place now? Well, the Jimbe Road will be um, commissioned. Yes. Uh, will be launched uh, very very soon. In fact, uh, yesterday we were there to check on the preparedness of the contractor to commence the works. Yes. So um, uh, what we saw was very very impressive. The contractor um, has, has adequately uh, mobilized. Great. Yes. So the president will be back in northwestern province within the next couple of weeks to launch the construction of the Jimbe Road. Yes, and uh, within a short period, you'll be back here to launch the construction of, uh, of the uh, Mushindamo Solwezi Road. Again, within a short period, you'll be back here to launch the, the construction of the Kasempa Mumba Road, Kasempa Kaoma Road, and also the Maninga Mwinlunga Road. So we, you know, for me, I'm very happy with what we've been able to achieve in under, in under a year, um, particularly for Northwestern Province. The Northwestern Province, before President Lungo came to power, had no project, no road construction project in the offing. But with the coming in of President Lungo, he has given Northwestern Province more than we could bargain for. I mean, there's, there's no time he has said no to any requests Coming from Northwestern Province. Coming from uh, Northwestern Province. You know, sometimes he has had to divert uh, projects from uh, other provinces to bring them to Northwestern Province. The funds that are meant to do um, about 200 kilometers 
of roadways in northwestern province were actually meant for eastern province. Mm. And he said, no, Mulusa, um, uh, can you look for projects in northwestern province? Because I feel that northwestern province is lagging behind in terms of uh, project implementation. We yes. need to bring everybody up to speed. Great. So it's it's very 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 impressive. One of my questions was going to, to look at the Shindamo Road, which I've already uh, preempted that the president will be coming to, to look at it, because we've seen each time uh, our children, our daughters are opening schools. It's quite a, a disaster to get them to school or get them back from school, especially during this uh, rain uh, season. We've also seen uh, the, the last few days uh, uh, the president was appointed some TCs. Well, one can say so, but the question is uh, what has driven that uh, um, the late uh, appointment? It's ourselves. I mean, the president will do um, request for recommendations um, in terms of appointments. One day this group recommends this, this list. You know, the next day the president is told, no, these are wrong people. Can you appoint these people? The next day somebody else comes, no, 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 no. Sir, these are the right people. But the next day, just like that. So, so the president says, hey, jobs. yeah, so the president would say, which is which? So basically, um, the lack of uh, unity in the province. We are fighting too much, very unnecessary fights. Even when you are, you are not participating in those fights, you are dragged in. Mm -hmm. No, it's Mulusa bringing confusion to Northwestern province. Even when you haven't been to <laughs> Northwestern province for so many months, say, no, it's Mulusa coming in the night to hold meetings. Oh. It's Mulusa this, it's Chiruvanama this, it is uh, this one this. You understand? Finger very, very unnecessary. Or, uh, exactly. We don't need this kind of thing. If we had unit of purpose, we would actually achieve a lot. Great. So the late appointment of uh, uh, this is we caused it, but later, uh, better late than never. Uh, yeah. So uh, I saw you on uh, our national broadcaster when you went around uh, inspecting projects in the districts that were uh, uh, created in the past, and uh, we saw that you had. Uh, in some areas, we're not happy with uh, project implementations. In some areas, yeah. what will happen with Mushindamo? Kingdom or Lumwana, has government already uh, pinpointed where their head offices will be, the bombers for this? Uh... Uh, well, um, you know, uh, President Lungu is a listening president yeah. and uh, he doesn't want to impose. Mm -hmm. So a process of uh, the community deciding for themselves where they would like their, their uh, uh, you know, district offices to be yes. was allowed to, to take place. Ah. There was a consultative meeting uh, which we had some time back immediately the districts were were declared. Yes. yes. So this the, the the final decisions on where um, the districts will be will lie um, in the recommendations of the various stakeholders, traditional leaders, the general public, um, uh, technocrats, mm -hmm. yes. So that's, that's, that's what is going to happen. But as for Mushindamo, mm -hmm. um, assuming that uh, the district uh, will be Mushindamo itself, yes, yes. we've seen electricity is already being taken there. Mm -hmm. RIA is already um, uh, taking electricity there through uh, rural electrification. Yes, yes. the road um, will soon start being constructed. Yes, yes. yes. and that's why uh, one of the contractors wants to finish the Chinwala Sorezi Road as quickly as possible without delay so that they can now move the equipment to the Mushindamo or Well, it's been very interesting, sir. I'd like also to to zero in, uh, you're a civil servant, but politics, elections are around the corner. Uh, we are hearing rumours, uh, Honorable Mulusa is coming back as our member of parliament. How true is that? Well, it's not true. If you recall during the time of the by-election yes. um, in 2014, one of the things I was talking about was the need to preserve leadership Great. in Northwestern province. You know, I said, please, let us not be joking with leadership. Today, uh, you elect Mulusa, tomorrow Mulusa is this, Mulusa doesn't even come here, Mulusa blah, 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 Mulusa must go. Six tomorrow Mulusa goes after saving for only two years, three months. 
The next time it's kafoya. No, kafoya is this, kafoya is that, kafoya is that, kafoya must go. The next time it's somebody else. I, I, I used to say, these same people are coming to encourage you to kick out your leaders. You look at them and how long they keep their leaders. Go to Southern Province. Southern Province has got MPs who, have, who are now in their third and fourth terms. The majority of the MPs in, in Southern Province have saved for more than two, three terms. But it is those same people who come here and encourage us here to kick out our 